have here with me the assemblyman for my pair, Ahosu Amos. Mr. Amos, how are you doing? I'm doing well, sir. How are you too? I'm doing very well. Mm. So we've seen the unfortunate inc incidents that occurred in Mepe. You are the assemblyman. How are things so far? Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Ahonsu Amos Bolo, assembly member of Mepe. Yeah, actually, we were told by VIA that uh, there's going to be spirit and uh, so we've been looking that it will happen, but we never know that it will happen this way. So it started last week, Thursday, and uh, exactly a week today, which is Wednesday, in the morning, early morning, that we were, we just heard that the water is coming. And then not knowing, did, did, little did we know that it would go this way. And before we realized, just like less than 10 minutes, or in 10 minutes, my house just submerged in the water. And the, the entire community got submerged as well. So I was in the town. The early morning, I do go to uh, information centers to give information to the people. Mm. So I was in the town. Then they just called me that uh, the water is on the way coming. And then before I realized, just in 10 minutes, yeah, the whole place got some mention. And I was at this level before packing out my things. Wow. So somewhere you seen that now, the sign that it can easily come down. Because the speed, the speed. Yeah, and before I realized, that is it, just in 10 minutes. Go down, yeah. So now you have some items in there, right? Yeah, some things are trapped in. So you are most of them are destroyed. By I destroy, now. yeah, by now. Yeah. So where do you live now? I'm living at Bato. Okay. Yeah, because my wife is a Batorian. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now let's come to the the spillage in itself. Um, did a VRA come here inform you guys about the exercise and all of that? What what were the modalities before this spillage happened? Yeah, actually, they mounted a, a signpost at St. Kizito, the, uh, and the rating on it is uh, our safe haven, the safe haven and the evacuation center. So they created it, and uh, whenever we go to the stakeholder conferences, that is uh, EPP, Environmental Preparedness Plan. Uh, yeah, so they gave us the opportunity, then we go to our communities to communicate to them that this is what they said that will happen. So it was in May, 11th May, this year, that uh, they came and uh, conducted a, a simulation exercise, all in creating awareness of uh, anything that can happen. They were telling us, they were saying, they are not saying that it will happen, but it can happen. Mm. But in so case it happens, possibility. possibility. Mm. So that in case it happens, your safe haven is St. Kizito campus. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> literally did we know it will come all this way. Okay, so now take us through how the residents here have been feeling. You are the assemblyman, so I'm sure you've been on the ground to fully understand how people are feeling and all of that. I know it's a very devastating situation, but what have you been picking up from the residents here? Yeah, actually, life is not normal. Mm. Life is not normal. As you know, this is a rural area, and uh, farming and fishing is our major occupation already. Mm. And uh, looking at our economic activities, that's not been booming so much. Mm. But uh, now that it happens like this, what will you do? Mm -hmm. And so the, the situation becomes intense and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. So this is the house of the assemblyman and he told us that uh, the spillage occurred somewhere in the afternoon. But he, he pointed out that if it had happened somewhere in the evening, um, his family wouldn't have make it, made it, including himself. So um, you can see the entire place has been submerged. All we can see right now is left with a roof of the building. I'm sure it's about a two or three bedroom house. It, yes, a three bedroom house here. And the whole entire place has been submerged along with other houses. There's also a church around the area as well, which has also been submerged. You can see Hand of God Church of All Nations, I understand. And you can see the water has reached the levels to the top of the tree. So I'm sure this is a really, really big tree. So the levels of this water have really, really reached its peak. Yeah, so I'm, I'm still going to be speaking with the assembly ma'am to further understand how things have been here in the Mepe community of the Volta region. Mr. Amos, so I've been learning quite a lot from you. Uh, you've brought us to your place. Now, if we can move okay. towards to the other side and see how... Yeah. Okay, so Amos is, is still taking us through. He, we've, we are moving from his private residence to where... There's a church building located, and and we can see even we can even see some poles with some electricity poles around here, and you can see the entire place has been submerged. The water has reached 
its peak levels and it's quite devastating for the community and most of them have had to move away from this place towards the battle area and so they no longer have homes to live in so they are virtually living in other places just so they can make do with what they have and most of them have also been recounting some of their losses um, they've had a lot of their items their televisions their clothes their food and all of that so um, they are calling on government to bring them some relief items i know some of them have received some rice and all of that mr amos have you received some of the relief items actually they started bringing things to us uh, like nadmo philanthropists other organization bodies like uh, NGOs, uh, individuals, churches, they've started it. But it's uh, looking at the situation and the population is woefully not enough. Mm. And so if authorities can come in to help us in whichever way, and that, that, that will do. Yeah, we, are, we are dying in need. Yeah. Especially uh, the, our health aspect. The health aspect, you can see that you can hear a scent of the river. Yeah. So it started breeding mosquitoes already. Mm. So even when it got dry, health implications like uh, cholera outbreak, malaria, and other related uh, sicknesses, yes, uh, it will happen. So authorities need to come in, in to help in that manner. I don't know what they might be bringing to us, but if mosquito nets, student mattresses, mosquito quails, anything that can help us survive uh, the situation. We are dying in the time before, before he's sitting on a tent out. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Emo, so there was something, I, just a little research I did. Uh, I understand this situation, this is the second time it's happening here. The last it happened was somewhere in 1963. Yeah, so take us briefly through, um, if, if you have an understanding of what happened back in 1963 and now. Yeah, actually, history taught us that it happens in 1963. Three. Mm. Myself, I'm 72 born, so okay. I haven't witnessed it. Mm. But they told us that it wasn't intense like this, mm. that of this. So this is the most intense? This is the, more in, the most intense, yeah. So that was what they taught us. Uh, they told us uh, that happens uh, in those days. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, well, I can't say much because I haven't witnessed it. It's just history. Mm. But they say exactly 60 go, years today. Exactly 60 years today. Mm. That it happens. Exactly. Yeah, exactly so it's more like history is repeating itself one way or the other. History is repeating itself, and, uh, and uh, you know, one cannot cheat nature even. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It has happened. It so, yeah. so now let's quickly come to the businesses. Now, we've, if, if, if you can take us, how many communities are here in the Mepe area? Yeah, Mepe Township itself, you have uh, six clans. Six. Six. Okay. Yeah, that is Ajigo, Banvier, Sevier, eh, eh, Hugo. Mm. Ajigo, Banvier, Sevier, Jagbaku, Akovier, and uh, Salem. All those uh, are, the, are the six. Uh, Mr. Amos, quickly, we are passing by a house here. We can see the entire house is submerged. Who, who lives here? Yeah, the name is Fafanyo. Fafanyo, Fafanyo okay. Israel. Yeah. So, how, how many people are in that house? They are about close to 10. Wow. Close to 10 people. Yeah. And, Some elders as well. and where are they now? Uh, three, two elders, a Dalis, and a one a Dali woman, and a before a woman and a, mm. their children. So they are all in a safe heaven. Wow. Okay, so at least they are safe for now. They are safe for now. Okay, sorry to cut you. Now take us back to, you were telling me about the districts, the community, the clans that are in the Mepe yeah. district. So we have these uh, five, uh, six clans uh, in Mepe here. So all of them have been all of them has been affected in order one way or the other so <laughs> first our 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 livelihood is as i told you is like farming and fishing mm. we do farming and fishing so today uh, economic activities has come to halt uh, life is not normal yeah there is a whole lot of suffering hunger those things well, we will experience it. So now let's come to the banks and the healthcare centers and all of that. What, what exactly are you picking on the ground? I'm sure we'll, we'll go there and see how things are faring down there. But what are you picking on the ground as the assemblyman of the area? Yeah, what I'm picking uh, about sanitation, I don't like the way the environment is being treated. Mm. And the uh, toilet facility in the school too is also a factor because mm. we have uh, an old dilapidated uh, KVIP toilet in the school. Oh, God. How is the impact of another spill 
going to affect this community? Because you made mention of so many other smaller communities being cut off. So communication has been cut off, electricity has been cut off. Should there be another sp spillage again? How is that going to impact this community? Yeah, Mepa will be totally be affected. Because when you reach some of the, the distant side of the roadside, some of the areas, just some few uh, meters, then, then the, uh, the water. So that tells you that if they were to spill again, you will be greatly affected. Mm. So is there a communication between the assembly, uh, maybe the, uh, the member of parliament and the VRA to ensure that should there be another spillage, we will not have such an effect like this one? Uh, actually, I'm sure they will, they will also be doing, uh, I mean, playing their part to, uh, for the do's and don'ts. Because yesterday when we had meeting, I overheard them saying some things that I may not like to say in the camera. <laughs> uh, what things uh, can you say, if you can just share with us briefly? <laughs> well, uh, they were just talking about uh, the way forward, okay. how for things to be okay, and uh, maybe if they have to spill again, what to do and what not to do there. That's I've been having a very interesting conversation, although it's very devastating. You took us to your own home, which has been submerged, and um, you are, you've also made a point about healthcare and how this situation is going to impact healthcare and also the communities that have been cut off. So I'm sure you'll be taking us through some other places. Uh, uh, other places that I may be taking you to. Even the safe havens, we haven't been there yet. We haven't been there yet, so we will go there. I'll show you a lot of places there. Yeah. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. So I've been speaking with Mr. Amos, and he's the assemblyman for the Mepe community. And he's been taking us through the exact um, impact of the Akosombo Dam spillage, and which is having an impact on the entire Mepe community. We'll be bringing you some more updates. I am Maoli Aholimega. This is Ghana Web TV. Cool. <music>